Hi everyone, my name is Liz. I'm from Different View Designs. I specialize in adaptive knitwear designs. So that means that I take traditional knitwear pieces and try and design them differently so that I can meet the needs of people that might have chronic illnesses or disabilities and that might have trouble with things like traditional fasteners. So I'm thinking outside the box to make really beautiful pieces for people that really work for everybody. Today, I'm gonna be going a little outside of the knit and crochet world, and we're gonna move into a little bit of DIY. So we're gonna start this DIY with a traditional tie. So this is a staple in a lot of people's closets. Many people wear ties, but they're also really difficult to manipulate. You have to tie the knot, you have to get the length right, you have to make sure it's tight enough. There's a lot that goes on with manipulating a tie that sometimes makes this not an accessible piece of clothing for a lot of people. So we're gonna take this traditional tie and I'm gonna show you how to DIY it into this adaptive tie. So this one has a knot that we're gonna sew in place so the knot is fixed. And we're gonna show you how to add this elastic neckband to the tie. And there's two options for the neckband, just a straight elastic loop that you can pull on over your head or I'm going to show you the option for the hook and eye closure. This one's really great for caregivers or people that are helping others get dressed to be able to just clip this tie using the hook and eye closure. And then the elastic neck is what's going to keep it nice and close to the collar. And all of this DIY is going to be hidden under the collar of the shirt. So you're never going to see it and no one is ever going to be able to tell the difference. So please follow along with the tutorial coming up. This one is great even if you are brand new to sewing or crafting or DIY, you can do this one. Just give it a little bit of patience. One thing I will say, if you are new to DIY and new to sewing, do not start with your very favorite tie, right? Go to the thrift store, find a tie that you don't care about and practice on that one first, and then we will move on to your very favorite tie or your recipient's very favorite tie. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna make it something that that person can love and use and wear every day. So if you're ready, follow along. I'm gonna show you all the supplies that you need and then I'm gonna show you a full video tutorial for how to do this DIY. And I would love to see what you guys make with it. So follow along with me on Instagram at Different View Designs. You can find me on Facebook as well. Tag me. If you try this DIY, I would love to see what you guys make and the impact that it makes on people's lives. So have fun, happy DIYing. All right, so let's go over the materials that you're gonna need for this project. First and foremost, you're gonna need a tie. So pick one that you're comfortable practicing with. Um, I would not recommend using your most favorite tie the very first time you try this tutorial, especially if you're brand new to sewing. Make sure that you have a practice tie. Um, grab one from the thrift store or an old tie that nobody wears anymore and practice on that one first. Next, you're going to need some sewing thread. I'm gonna use a contrast thread when I do my project, but when you do your tie, you're gonna to want to grab a thread color that matches your tie. That way all of the stitches, even though the stitches are gonna be hidden, they'll be the most concealed if you use a, a thread that matches your tie. So for this tie, I would use a navy colored thread, but like I said, I'm gonna use white here so you can see all the stitches. You're also going to need a sewing needle this one's fairly small, super pointy. If you're brand new, just look for one of these small sewing needles. Alternately, if you have a sewing machine, you can do a lot of this on the sewing machine, but there are still some, some hand sewing portions. So make sure you have your thread and your sewing needle. You're gonna need a pair of sharp scissors. These are my fabric scissors, but any super sharp scissors will work just fine. Just wanna make sure that it'll cut through the tie once we get to that part. I know that sounded scary, don't worry. We'll get there. Next, you're gonna grab some of this braided elastic. This is a large chunk, you can buy it in smaller pieces. This is half inch braided elastic. You could also probably go with quarter inch. I wouldn't go much wider 
than this right here. If you go super wide with your elastic, it's gonna be uncomfortable when it sits under the collar of the shirt. So go for something about this width. Make sure it's super stretchy. That's what we're going for. So you got your elastic. And next we're going to need either some hem tape or some fusible interfacing. I have fusible interfacing here because that's just what I had on hand. Um, hem tape works great as a no-sew way um, to cover up ends. This fusible interfacing will do just about the same thing. So you can see here, hopefully, if my camera, there it goes. So you can see the little dots on the back. So this makes this able to be ironed onto the fabric. And what we're gonna use this for is when we cut the ends of our tie, we're gonna use this, either the hem tape or the fusible interfacing to keep that end from fraying and unraveling. So you want something that can be ironed on to your piece. You can see I don't have much here. We're only gonna use even a small portion of what I have right here. Um, so if you're brand new and you don't know which one to get, grab hem tape. Just make sure it's iron on. And that being said, make sure you have an iron handy, an iron and an ironing board. And then the last thing that we're gonna need is an optional piece. If you want to grab one of these hook and eye closures, this is an option that we're gonna have in this tutorial. So if you don't have one of these, it's perfectly fine. Um, this might make it slightly easier when you go to put on the tie to have this hook and eye closure. Otherwise, the elastic is gonna allow it to completely slip on over the head and slip off the same way. But especially if you're a caregiver and you wanna try and be putting this tie on and off, one of these hook and eye closures might be super helpful. Um, and we'll cover that part in the tutorial coming up next. So make sure you grab all of your supplies. Once you're ready, join us back and we will start our tie DIY. All right, so we ready to get started? First things first, you're gonna need your tie. What I want you to do is go ahead and tie the tie. So you may need to do this with someone actually wearing the tie. Make sure that you get the knot exactly how you like it, and you can do any knot style that you prefer for this one. And make sure that you get the length that you want for your tie. And this one is super important. So this is the number one tip to make this tutorial work correctly, is to make sure that you have your tie tied appropriately. Because once we start, there is no going back. If you decide halfway through that you don't like the knot style or that the length is too long or too short, there's no going back. So like they say, measure twice, cut once. I'm going to say measure three times before we do anything. And also a quick little tip here too, make sure that the recipient of your tie, the person that's gonna be wearing it, make sure that this length works for them in different postures. So if you have someone that's in a wheelchair, for example, make sure that the tie length works for them and doesn't pull at the bottom when they sit down. For someone in a wheelchair, the tie might need to be a little bit shorter. If you have someone that can be in a standing posture or a seated posture, make sure that you're trying the tie length when they're both sitting and standing to make sure that it looks really nice. So typically, they say that tie length um, should be from the top of the tie all the way down, and the tip of the tie should hit right about at the top of the belt buckle or the top of the pants. But this is really a, a personal preference on how you or the recipient want your tie to fit. But again, I will say it again, make sure that it fits, make sure you like the knot, and make sure that the length is exactly what you want it to be before we get started. So, you wanna get your tie tied. You don't have to worry at all about how big the neck is. So we're gonna completely take this part away. What you're concerned about is this part from about here down. And this is also a great time to make sure that the narrow end of the tie sits nicely on the back. Some of them do have this little piece where you can tuck the tie under. If you want, make this a little shorter or a little longer so that it stays tucked in and nice looking when your person is wearing the tie. All right, so we got that. You double checked, right? You triple checked that your tie is the right length, yes? Okay, 
awesome. So here's the first bit. If you're brand new to any kind of DIY, don't freak out because we're gonna start sewing, but this one's gonna be pretty easy. So what I want you to do is take your tie, flip it over to the back. Now let's take a look at the back of the tie. This might look a little different depending on which type of knot you decided to use, but basically what I want you to see is that there are overlapping pieces of fabric on the knot. You can see how this piece is on top, it overlaps this piece of fabric, overlaps this piece of fabric. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our thread and our sewing needle and we're gonna sew this knot in place. So what you wanna do is especially here where the tie, where the different layers of the tie overlap each other, that's where you're gonna to wanna to sew it down. And also here you can see where the narrow part of the tie sits behind the wider part. We can also sew that down. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Again, this is the back of the tie, right? So when a person wears it, you're only gonna see the front. Any stitches that you do on the back will be completely hidden. So again, if you're brand new to DIYs, brand new to sewing, don't stress about this. Even if your stitches don't look pretty, they're not gonna be visible, all right? So let's get ready to sew. All right, so I've just cut myself a length of my sewing thread. And since this tutorial is for beginners, I'm gonna show you the way that I normally do this. So take the end of the thread, if you want to kind of wet it, I like to lick my fingers and kind of run it across the end of the tie. That makes all those fibers lay flat and makes it a little bit easier to thread the needle. Let's see it there. You see that tiny, tiny end of the needle? You wanna thread your sewing thread through there. And don't worry, if you're new to this, it takes a little practice, especially because these needles are really small. They also make some tools that are helpful in threading the needle for you if you want to pick up one of those. So what you're going to do, once you've threaded the needle, you're going to take the two cut ends, the two cut ends, and bring them together. And we're going to make a couple of knots in the end. So right close to the end. Tie do two or three, sometimes four, depending. You just want to make sure that it's super secure. There you go, my knots. If you have, if your ends here are a little too long, you can just cut them with the scissors, that's fine. So what we've done is if we come all the way down, we've got the needle, because we threaded the one end, so your needle is hooked on there. This is a great tip for beginners because then you won't constantly be losing your thread as it pulls out of the eye of the needle. So we have the knot in one end, the needle in the other end. So let's start sewing. So remember we talked about the back here. You just wanna sew this down to make sure that none of this moves. So I'm gonna take my thread here, pull it in so that knot will keep it from pulling out. And then I'm just gonna do some slip stitches right through here. And I'm catching this side here, see where it's kind of navy, and coming out on the other. So I'm catching both ends, this top piece and the piece that it overlaps and try and grab multiple layers of your fabric. You may have to kind of work the needle in. I think I pushed it through too many layers. There we go. Pulling it through and keep pulling it tight as you go. Again, this doesn't have to look pretty. Push it through. And this all just also depends on what type of fabric your tie is made out of how easy it's gonna to be to sew it through. If your fingers start to hurt, you can grab a thimble as well. Remember if your mom or grandma was a sewer, she might have a sewing box around. There might be a lot of these little things in here. So we're just gonna keep going. You can see how I've started to tack that down. I'm just gonna keep sewing around so that I get this layer and also that I'm tacking down 
this part. The one thing to remember here, don't ever let your needle come to the front of the tie. So if you ever end up with something that looks like this, no, we don't want that. We want all the stitches to stay on the back. And there's a lot of layers here, so you probably don't have to worry about it poking through to the front too much. That's just a little tip. So here we go. I'm gonna keep going and we will come back when I've got more of this sewn up. got your tie kind of sewn up, I kind of went down this way, came around, I tacked down a little bit here and a little bit here. So one thing that we're gonna do, if you have any leftover thread here, is we're just gonna take our needle and push it into the meat of the tie. Remember, don't come out the front, but we're pushing horizontally. This helps if you have a slightly longer needle. Push it through. You can see how it just came out the other side. Pull that through. All right, and we're going to do the same thing again. So go back into the tie kind of near where you had it before. And push out. Push out to a different section. So we're going through multiple layers of the fabric here fiddle around with it. So push it on the table, there we go. This is coming through. And do the same thing. So I'm gonna go in close to where you came out last time. Push it up through. This time I'm gonna come up a little bit higher. lost in there. All right, and that's just going to tack down. So we did some sewing on the top and then we pulled this through to kind of catch multiple layers of the tie under there. All right, and then I'm actually going to do one more and I'm going to come out where one of these seams is to help bind off our thread. All right, so I'm going to push the needle out about right there. I'm going to teach you how to secure this thread. Alright, there you go. So, remember we have the little loop here. You're going to just let the needle fall. And then you're going to cut this loop. Do this left handed. I cannot. Hold please. Cut with my right hand. So we're just going to get that loop right there, cut it. And now don't take your needle off. You're going to see that your needle is still threaded with one layer here. Separate at this one layer of thread here and the layer of thread that's still looped on the needle. So take your needle with your thread still attached pull it through just a little bit of the tie there, pull it all the way through and you can pull your needle off. So now you have two ends, two ends of the string and you're just going to tie a few knots.
All right, awesome. So now you've secured the back of your tie. We're gonna go through and we're gonna do the same thing over here and over here. So where the tie, the pieces of the tie for the neck, where they come out of the knot. Remember, keep working on the back, but we're just going to do the same thing where we're securing with little stitches on both sides there. You don't have to do it where you pull through the knot. We're just gonna secure the top of the tie. So I'll meet you back here after we're done with that. All right, we're back. How'd you do? Let's take a look at the back. So to recap, we did a line of stitches here, here. We basically tacked down this whole knot on the sides here and here. Remember, these stitches are gonna be hidden on the back. I used contrast thread, but if you use a thread color that closely matches your tie, then a lot of these stitches will even be invisible then. And some of my stitches I made a little big just so that you could see where I placed them. Um, if you're a more experienced sewer, please feel free to make it look neater than mine. That's totally fine. But just for this tutorial, I wanted everyone to see exactly where the stitches were landing. So we basically tacked down this entire tie. All right, so now I want you to take a few deep breaths because next up is the scissors. Yep. So grab your super sharp, either fabric scissors or any other kind of sharp scissors will do. And we're gonna work on the ends, of, or actually on the neck of the tie. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go from the edge of the tie here, maybe about two inches on either side, and we're gonna cut this tie, all right? So this is the point of no return. If you're unsure of whether you actually wanna cut this tie, maybe it's time to pause. If you're unsure about the length or the knot, again, time to pause. Because once we get past this step, no going back, all right? So all we're gonna do here is cut, like I said, about two inches, just enough so that this part gets hidden under the collar of the shirt, but we're gonna make the neck the adaptable part of this tie. All right, so are we ready? So measure out, it doesn't have to be perfect. Again, this is gonna be hidden. So measure out whatever makes you feel comfortable. Measure it out and we're just gonna cut evenly across. Try and cut directly across, not at an angle, but at a straight, straight line. All right, ready? One, two, three, go. Okay. How are we feeling? All right, let's do that on the other side. Ready? About the same amount. One, two, three, cut. Okay, put this away. How are we feeling? You guys did great. Okay, so let's take a look at this tie. Every tie is a little bit different in the way it's constructed. The actual tie fabric is folded over. There's a little insert here. Good, same thing on the other side. All right. So let's take our hem tape or our fusible interfacing, whichever, and you're gonna wanna cut this so that it can go over one end and then go over the other end with just a little bit of overlap. So I'm gonna pull out my fabric scissors again. I'm gonna cut here. See, this will be enough to cover this and flip it over. Okay. So remember what this is for. We don't want the ends of this to fray. You can see there, you start to get some fraying and we want to stop that because we want this tie to last. You can see it right there a little bit too. All right, so we're gonna get a section of hem tape for each side of our neck. I'm going to cut one more of these. All right, so here's where you're going to go to your iron. My iron's off screen, so I'm going to go and come back. I'm just going to iron this so that both sides are covered by that hem tape. Okay? Go get your iron. Follow the instructions on your hem tape or your fusible interfacing, whatever it is that you're using here to stop your fabric from fraying. Iron it down and meet me back here. All right, 
right, we're back. How'd you do? This is what mine looks like. You can see I left some extra here. It's got little ears on it. That's totally fine. You can even see with my interfacing, it overlapped a little bit. Sorry, it's all fine. All of this is gonna be hidden. So all we wanna make sure is that we've just secured those ends of the tie so that they don't fray or unravel. Now we're ready for elastic. Here we go. So you're gonna need your recipient for this, whoever's gonna wear the tie. You're gonna need them as you measure out this elastic. So what we wanna do is we want to take a piece of elastic and we're going to make a loop and we're gonna sew it to the ends of this tie. So then essentially this tie becomes slip on because it can pull on right over the head. So there's a couple of things that you need to consider here with this. If your elastic is too loose, then your necktie is just going to hang at the front of your shirt and there's gonna be a gap in between the top collar of the shirt and where the tie hangs. And that's if the elastic is too loose. If the elastic is too tight, yes, you guys are smart, you guessed it, it's gonna feel like it's choking the person that's wearing the tie. Bad, right? So we wanna make sure that the elastic, when the tie is on, that the elastic is slightly stretched so that it pulls the tie nice and close, but it's not so stretched that the person feels choked. So you're gonna need to take this piece of elastic, you're gonna need to measure it, and probably what you wanna do is take a safety pin and safety pin this here, safety pin the other side, and have them actually try it on and make sure that it feels okay for them. You can always double check this measurement. So you can take the neck size, so the shirt, the size of the shirt neck of your recipient, and it should be fairly close to what you have right here once you've attached your two pieces. Probably a little bit smaller for the tie because we're using the elastic. So it might be an inch or so smaller than their regular shirt size. So I've cut my piece of elastic. So now we're ready to attach it. So we're gonna start at one end. And all I'm gonna do, so again, we're gonna work on the back of the tie, like we have been doing. And you're gonna take one end of your elastic and put it in there. I left these little flaps on here because I think it's easier to work with it that way. We're just gonna fold it over. You see I folded over a little bit of the tie there as well. And fold it over the other side. So basically we've got the elastic trapped right in there, okay? And what we're gonna do is right here, we're going to sew across in a line. So if all you have is your sewing thread and your needle, that will work just fine. If you have access to a sewing machine, here's where that's really gonna help you because we really want this elastic to be stuck in there super tight and we don't want it to accidentally pull out. So if you are using your sewing needle, just make sure that you're going back and forth multiple times. I would actually do a line of stitching here and a line of stitching here, like maybe do a couple of rows and then make sure you tie it off really tight. And you can always test, ooh, see, <laughs> just like I planned. If it pulls out like that, and again, I was just holding that with my finger, but if the elastic pulls out, then you know that you need to sew it tighter. Or if it doesn't feel secure in there, you wanna sew it down a little bit tighter. So I'm gonna to go to my sewing machine and I'm gonna sew this real quick. If you need to take a minute to use your sewing needle and your thread and sew back and forth, take your time to do that and come back, we'll look done. All right, let's see how you did. All right, so here's my end. I did this on the sewing machine, but you can see how I did a couple of lines of stitches right there, and I made sure to catch the elastic. So I'm tugging on it pretty hard, and it's not coming out. So I basically trapped the elastic. You can see the end of it right there. I've trapped it under two layers of stitching. Yeah? All right. So here's your options. 
here's where we have to make a choice. You can just take the other end of your elastic and make a loop. So you would sew this the exact same way. On the back, you put your elastic down, fold the ends over, and sew so that the, these ends would look identical, right? And then you've got a loop, and then all your recipient has to do is slip this on over the head, fold the collar down just like you would over a regular tie, and ta-da, you're ready to go. So I'm gonna show you another option, just in case this makes it a little bit easier to put the tie on. And this is especially helpful for caregivers or someone that is putting the tie on, is we are going to use, if I can find, there it is. We're gonna use this hook and eye closure. So essentially, we're going to fold this over without the elastic in it, and we're gonna sew to keep this end flat. All right, we're gonna add the hook onto this side, right there. We're gonna add, I'm sorry, this is the eye. <laughs> that is the eye. We are gonna add the hook onto the elastic so that as a caregiver or someone that's helping with dressing, this hook and eye will actually fall right underneath the front part of the collar. So you can imagine a tie here, a shirt collar is gonna lie flat right over it. So to help with dressing, you would just need to flip up the collar, pull this end around, and use the hook and eye to help attach it. So that's just another option that doesn't require someone pulling this on and off over their head. So I'm gonna show you that option now. So the first step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this, and remember, no elastic inside, and I'm just gonna sew across to make sure that those ends stay down. All right, so now that's sewn down. So I've got my one end attached to the elastic, and the other end just tacked down. That's what it looks like from the back. All right. So let's grab your hook and eye closure. I'm gonna show you the right orientation for these. Of course, mine are white, so they disappear on, here we go. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna take the eye right there, and here's the hook. So they just go together, come on, like this, All right? So the hook is gonna grab the eye so we have to make sure that these are both oriented correctly as we sew them down. So we're gonna start with the hook, sorry, the eye. <laughs> on the end without elastic on it, I want you to look at this orientation. So here's the knot, and you see how the eye is pointing out. So there's the two little loops on the end, that's for sewing, and then the eye portion right there is what's going to catch the hook. Yes? All right, so that's the orientation that we want right there. So we're going to use our needle and thread and sew this guy down. Again, sew it down pretty securely because it's going to hold the whole tie together. So we're going to take our thread and our needle and go to town. All right, so I have my eye sewn on right here. So I put, I don't know if you can see it, some little stitches on the sides right there to hold the eye in place. And you can give it a little tug and make sure that it's secure. You can do this with, the, with your hand, just the hand sewing, um, or you can also do this carefully on the sewing machine too, um, whatever you're more comfortable with. So now we have to get the placement of our hook. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to take your elastic from the other end and make sure that it's straight and is not twisted. And so we're going to loop it around right here. And this goes for if you're not using the hook and eye, you also want to make sure that this isn't twisted in any way. We're going to bring it back and just hold it right here. And you can see it's going to lie flat right around the neck, okay? See that? 
All right, so to place the hook, remember we wanna place the hook where it's gonna catch the eye. So this laid flat, we're gonna to wanna to put the hook on the inside of this piece of elastic. And we wanna put it so that it faces away from the eye. So they're going to go together like this. It will hook like that. So same thing, you're going to sew down the little ends here, either with a sewing machine or with just a needle and thread. All right, how'd you go? Let's see. So remember we have our eye over here. I just sewed my little hook on there. And you can see how the hook part is pointing out and the very top part is pointing towards the end of the elastic. All right, so now these two just go together like so. So there you have it. That is our adaptive tie DIY. Go ahead, you are ready to adapt all of your ties to be easy to wear. Also, if you're looking for more DIYs, I've also got some knitting and crochet patterns out there. If you like tie DIYs specifically and you're a knitter, I actually have an adaptive knitting pattern for a necktie um, that makes a really beautiful um, herringbone style knitted tie that's also adaptive, kind of similar to what I've shown here, just a little bit different. Um, the knot's actually adjustable and the length is adjustable on that one too. So I will put a link to that down in the description as well. And thank you guys for following along. Tag me at Different View Designs with the ties that you adapted. I would love to see what you guys have made. Thanks.